And I would like to call the March 26, 2024 Summersworth School Board meeting to order. Can I have a roll call, please? Maggie Larson. Here. Todd Marsh. Here. Carrie Clark. Here. Sarah O'Brien Hart. Here. Crystal D. St. Croix. Here. Marsha Brown. Here. Barbara Wentworth. Here. Susan Tierney. Here. Gemma Soldati. Here. I would like to invite Chaplain Kasule to lead us in the pledge this evening. Yep. <laughs> under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. We'd like to open this to comments by visitors this evening. Any comments by visitors, please approach the podium. State your name and address. Seeing none. Any comments by board members before? You'll have another opportunity at the end of the meeting. Okay. All right, agenda item number three, our consent calendar. What's the wish of the board to accept the consent calendar as presented? I wish to accept the consent calendar as presented. Okay, do I have a second? Second. Okay, any discussion about any items on the consent calendar, mostly minutes? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 The consent calendar is adopted. All right, our reports this evening, we will start with our student representative report. Take it away, Mr. Mushnick. I think, yeah, there we go. <laughs> oh. All right, we, we're figuring it out. So, uh, <laughs> so um, recently, uh, of course, there was the uh, SHS Theater performing uh, Little Shop of Horrors. Uh, I was in it. I was the shop owner, Mr. Mushnick. Um, thank you. Uh, and to say it was a success is, to say the least, uh, most of the shows were sold out and it definitely wasn't a disappointment. Uh, people, students and staff all said that it was a great uh, show. Even Mr. Tebow said like he really loved it. And I've heard a lot of uh, people say that it was their favorite production from our school and that it's on par with some pretty big uh, places. So obviously there's thanks to uh, our live band that played during the show, we I don't know when the, the last time we've had that, or if we've had it at all. So, uh, amazing thing, and also Mr. Burns, the director uh, of the overall project, and uh, the band director uh, who directed the whole pit, uh, Mr. Di Bernardo. Amazing job to them both, and probably could, definitely could not have done it without them. Um, there are still CTC uh, interviews for applicate applicants and uh, different programs such as in uh, Rochester and Dover so while those are still happening students can uh, definitely get enrolled into not just our classes but Rochester and uh, Dover CTC classes. Uh, the National Honor Society had finished their food drive for the uh, NH Humane Society uh, which is just incredible um, and then uh, actually Senora Farron's in the back there uh, there's a uh, still people needed for the uh, Dominican Republic trip. Um, so it seems like an incredible experience. So hopefully people can uh, you know, sign up. Uh, what room is it? Room 107, yeah. So definitely a great uh, opportunity. Uh, there's testing uh, for like big tests for uh, tomorrow the 27th. Uh, the freshmen will be doing the NIWA test as well as staying the whole day to do uh, CTC experiences where they go around our school and uh, get a little taste of some of our classes we offer. And then the uh, sophomores will be doing the PSATs and the juniors are going to take the SATs, um, both of which will be leaving early uh, when they finish. So um, yeah, I'm a bit nervous about that, but <laughs> hopefully. Um, and then a little bit after, on April 2nd, uh, quarter three is ending, and we're going into the last quarter of the year, getting closer to summer, which is exciting, yeah. Um, so the uh, band winter percussion finals are uh, coming up, and the jazz night is on April 7th in the Black Box Theater. Actually, I have an update with that. I think that that is canceled because they're double booked, just oh. because I... 
have three children in winter percussion. So uh, their winter percussion um, is up in Sanford for the day oh, with yeah. all the main winter okay. percussion, and it would have been too close for jazz night. So that say, stay tuned for right. future jazz. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, definitely stay tuned for that. Um, so uh, spring sports are starting up. Uh, baseball, which I'm really excited for, and softball as well, both of which will be uh, having their first game on April 10th. Um, and then also spring track is starting, so uh, really excited for all these spring sports to get going. Uh, and then uh, prom on May 18th at the uh, River Mill Landing in uh, Dover. Um, they're still selling tickets, I believe, so definitely uh, great to see. You know, it's a beautiful, uh, beautiful reserv er, place they have it at. So that's all I have. So thank you. Yes, yeah. thank you. Yes, great job. So I just want to say, Chaplain, can you come every week or every time we're meeting? This was great. Good job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we alternate. So yeah. that's all right. That's good. Great. Any other board members? Usually we release our student representatives since they have so many other things to do. You are welcome to stay. Um, but thank you so much, Chaplain. All right. Moving along to agenda item 4.2, our superintendent's report. Thank you, Chaplain, for your you. report. I always like following the students, so it's nice. Nice to hear your report. I have two brief items tonight. Um, first, um, the update on central office uh, administrators, our searches. Um, we finished up with interviewing um, uh, the for the special ed administrator position, and um, I'll be talking with somebody about it soon and um, contacting references and things like that. So that, that's moving right along. I, I want to thank um, Sarah was on that committee as well as Susan. Thank you for your participation on that. And Sue Blair, who's here tonight, she served on that committee as well. Number of folks, um, really good uh, process, I think, uh, well organized and um, we're ready to move forward. Um, and then with the assistant superintendent uh, positions, we have um, uh, five candidates. Um, we plan on doing a full day of work uh, of interviewing on April 1st. Uh, it's going to be a full day event. We have uh, a lot of folks on that committee. Uh, we're going to be having the interviews over at uh, Mulligan's Cafe. And uh, so it'll be a full day event. I'm hoping I'll have uh, some folks to recommend to you on, on the April 9th uh, school board meeting. So things are moving along. I'm pretty optimistic about where we're headed. Um, any questions about the process? Or who did I forget that's on the, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Crystal is on the Assistant Superintendent Search Committee. Thank you for your time as well. And I know, Kara, you started off, but work is work. Is work. Yeah, yeah. So thank you. Uh, and then the next item is just an announcement that uh, we're ready to meet with the city council uh, on the, is it the first, Katie? I believe it's the yeah. first. That's where we kick off the meeting with the city council with regard to the fiscal year 25 budget. Um, optimistic about that and um, looking forward to meeting with the city council and having some meaningful dialogue around education for our students in Summersworth. So that's on the horizon. I'm sure you're all welcome to attend if you want. Um, anyway. That's latest on me. Quick question about yeah. that. Um, how, has there been any feedback regarding our proposal? I haven't had any Post feedback, Katie. Have you had any directly? It hasn't even no. begun in the process yet. So they introduced it on March 18th okay. as their first introduction. Um, they can't discuss it until after public hearing. So on April 1st, we'll do the pre budget presentation. Then it's followed by a public hearing, and then they begin their discussion. So it hasn't started yet. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good, great question. That's it for me All until right. later on. All right. Well, moving forward to our business administrator's report. Katie. Yeah. Thank you. Um, okay, so the update is included in your packet. Um, since the last update, um, our available balance has increased um, by like $132,000, which is good news. Um, I've continued to uh, encumber all the open positions for salaries and benefits. Um, we were able to fill a few positions since I did our last update. We filled the music teacher at Idlehurst and Maplewood, um, our HR coordinator, and three para positions. However, since that time, we've also had to add three para positions due to student move-ins at Idlehurst. So we're back to square one with the paras. <laughs> so we currently have four open para positions, um, three at Idlehurst and one at the high school, which has been open all year. And each budget update, I uh, release the encumbrances based on the number of days that are remaining in the year, so that way we can release the funds. 
Um, for special education, um, we were able to release um, approximately $123,000 for out-of-district placements. We had some placeholders for kids that we're looking for placements for, so again, we decrease that encumbrance each time because we haven't placed the students, so there's less months that we're going to need to encumber for that. But we also had an increase to our special ed transportation, um, just under $47,000. Utilities, again, that's another area where I look at every budget update and, and release the encumbrances as needed. Um, in technology, funds were paid to New View for the additional expenditures that the board approved for the technology plan and review. And then other expenditures. So at the, um, if you remember correctly, we had earmarked some um, other expenditures with the um, supplemental appropriation with the adequacy funds. We put those on hold because of the special ed situation with the available balance we had. Well, seeing the healthy balance that we have, I've re-encumbered um, the projects that we were holding off on, and I'm going to give it a couple more weeks. And if we're holding steady like we are, then I'm going to start releasing the funds and, and making those purchases. So those were the culinary oven replacement, the high school marquee sign, uh, the weight room at the middle school, the main hallway tile repair or replacement at the middle school, and additional radios throughout the district. So um, as long as the budget holds steady, I'm going to move forward with doing those. The board's already approved those as part of our expenditures, so um, we're hopeful we can move forward with those. Um, in terms of revenue, since the last update, we received our payments from um, the other districts for the CTC program. So we get um, payments first half of the year and then second half of the year from like Dover and Rochester the, when they send the students to us. And then we've also received um, the payment from Stratford County Community Action for their building use for um, the space at Idlehurst for Head Start. Um, and then I put some information about the 24-25 budget. As Lou mentioned, we have um, the presentation coming up on April 1st, um, followed by the public hearing, and then there's a meeting on April 15th of the council will, where it will be on the agenda, and then they've scheduled a special meeting if needed on April 22nd for the budget. So that's kind of the process going forward with that. And then a couple of items on food service. Um, each year the board um, takes a look at our meal prices for the following school year. Um, the DOE likes us to increase our prices by a minimum of 10 cents each year to try to bring those prices that we're charging our paid students to match what we're being reimbursed for our free and reduced students. Um, each year the, bo uh, the board considers you know, how much they want to go up, whether or not it's the minimum of 50, uh, 10 cents or more. Last year we did a combination. We did some 5 cents, some 10 cents. Um, the budget committee met uh, last week and um, is recommending that the board um, increase the meal prices by the minimum of the 10 cents. So I've put a chart in there to show you where, um, what the prices will be at each level for next year. Um, and then our food service management contract has to be renewed annually by the board as well as the Department of Education. Um, so Fresh Picks has given me the renewal. Um, this is our second renewal. We have the option when we went out to bid um, in 21. This started in July of 22. And we have four additional renewals with them. So this is our second. And then once we get to the fourth, we'll go out to bid again. Um, so the projected annual cost for the contract with Fresh Picks for next year is 744187 that is an increase of $7,593. However, they're projecting an increase in our revenue by 7609 so it gives a profit to the program of $16. So we're basically breaking even for next year. <laughs> so don't spend that $16 all in one place. Um, again, the Budget and Revenue Committee met on the 21st, and they're recommending that the board um, approve this renewal with fresh picks. Um, I know it is later on in the agenda for approval. I had mentioned I would put it on the next agenda, so if you want to vote for it tonight, you can. However, I'm okay waiting until the next meeting. Some, you know, typically you like to wait and vote at the second meeting. So and that's all I have. Um, yeah, I don't know if this is directed more towards you or, or Lou, but um, in regards to the open para positions, so how do we... Um, I mean, I'm assuming these are positions that are needed um, per the IEPs, right? So how do we make sure we're still in compliance with the fact that these students are required by law to have support? We either double up, we do shared paras. Um, sometimes we have to contract out if we can't find the para and use a, a company to come in and do it. So, okay, yeah. Some of them were just move-ins, so yep. I know we have a little bit of time before we have to get them in place, but um, okay. yeah, Is they, there, they share. Is there a... Um, a uh, a window of time that like is like 
like we have to get them, you know, within like 30 days that or something? I don't, I don't know. No, there curious. is no window of time. Okay. You, you really have to make a great effort to, to fill it, and you have to document that. Yeah. Okay. All right. So they just uh, they just have to see that we are We're doing trying, what we yeah. can to. Yeah. Pre we've been advertising. Yeah. And oh, like yeah. I said, they cover sure. within. They they share the paras that we yeah. have. Yeah. Okay. I was just curious. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Can you? Yeah. One question about the um, fresh pick contract. Uh, where can I get a copy of the food that is part of that contract, just so I can see what's being served? I can send you that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I do believe there's a new, like, a, a, a new Fresh Picks kind of um, Yeah, they just interface. released a new, yes, um, starting April 1st. Right. Yep, I just sent out flyers for it for that. And that's kind of, from my limited understanding, it's kind of more information about food mm -hmm. and... I can share those flyers uh, with the board. I can email like planning those and what the meals are. Yep. Is that what it is? Yes. Yep. Yep. Katie can forward that yep. to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Yep. We'll get that out. Right. Yeah. All good. All right. Thank you. Um, we do not have a city council update this evening, so we'll move on to our committee reports, our standing committees. We'll start with Budget and Revenue Committee. Uh, board Member Marsh. All right. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, as the Business Administrator indicated, the Budget and Revenue Committee met on March 21st. Great summary, by the way. I will not repeat that. Um, however, I will state um, that, yes, we reviewed the updated 23-24 budget. We um, had a great discussion regarding the food service meal prices, uh, and we are recommending the minimum uh, 10 cent increase as proposed. Uh, we are also recommending um, the service management contract to Fresh Picks as proposed. Thank you. Okay. Great. Moving to Building Grounds and Transportation Committee. Board Member Clark. So buildings and grounds did not meet, um, but we are meeting April 2nd at 5.15 at Maplewood. At Maplewood. Great. All right. Educational programs and community outreach. Board Member Wentworth. Thank you, Chair Larson. Um, our next meeting is April 16th um, at Summersworth Middle School at 4 p.m. Um, and so this, we did meet, um, and uh, Rihanna Core, is that how? Riona, same. Uh, that's what I meant. Uh, Rihanna, uh, Deputy Director at New Hampshire um, Hunger Solutions, came and presented um, to the Educational Committee, and it was an awesome meeting. Um, they, she is pairing with um, Chris Faro from um, Fresh Picks. And um, they will be coming to present um, to us um, regarding the CEP, which is, a, it's a, I'm, I'm going to let her explain it all, but um, it's a USDA require, uh, reimbursement program with a lot of moving parts, um, but the possibility of having free or free um, breakfast and lunch for all of our students is pretty a pretty phenomenal option um, and so she can she'll present on that I believe April 9th um, potentially um, and uh, both with her and Chris and um, we'll kind of you know look about going forward with that um, we did get an update on the health center the school based health center is still doing awesome um, the counselor is full every time, uh, which is amazing, and I think that's it. Thanks. Great. Moving to our policy committee, Board Member Tierney. Thank you, Madam Chair. The policy committee actually has not met since our last school board meeting. Um, I do owe the board some notes from that meeting that was that took place right before the last school board meeting. Um, so those will be brief. There we didn't cover too much, but um, those will be forthcoming. Uh, the next meeting for policy is um, on the agenda April, here. April yep, May. April 9th, um, 545. Okay, wonderful. Office. Thank, Thank you. you. Actually, we're going to try to schedule here. Oh, that's right. Uh, oh, yes, uh, we're going to try to schedule here because it's right, right. before right. the school board meeting. Save us yep. some time. So yes. and, and, and Alice um, called Brenda today, and we have that space. So we're going to meet here. Perfect. Okay, so April 9th here. In, in the what well, we call be in the that little bowl, that little room, that little conference room, fish bowl. the fishbowl, 545. All right, thank you. All right, 
Um, I would like to welcome our presentation this evening, uh, Recovery Friendly Workplace. This has been a long time coming, years maybe, of aligning our, um, our focus with the city and with the school district. So please welcome Ms. Christy Curtis, and the Recovery Friendly Workplace Direct, assistant Director, we upgraded you, um, and Ms. Ellie Mason, uh, the uh, Advocate Advisor for Recovery Friendly Workplace. Um, they have a presentation this evening. Again, the history of Recovery Friendly Workplace in Summersworth kind of stemmed from the Mental Health, um, Mental Hilltop Mental Health Commission, and today is just kind of kind of solidifying our our involvement, but kind of um, presenting it to the board. So welcome. Absolutely. Can you hear me okay? All right. Thank you all so much. Um, I, I appreciate being here. Um, thank you for having us. I appreciate all you do as well. Um, I am from Goffstown, New Hampshire. Um, I was on our, uh, our school board um, from 2014 to 2018, and I understand what a big job it is and how, um, how much work it is and commitment it is. So thank you all for kind of hearing me out. We are gonna try to move through the presentation fairly quickly so we can leave some room for questions and next steps, if that sounds okay. How does this work? Is this going from all? Uh, we're very excited um, to have Ellie here. She is a uh, she is still onboarding. She's a brand new recovery friendly advisor with us, um, and she is from Portsmouth, and um, so she'll be doing a lot of work out in this area of the state. Um, recovery friendly workplace is a statewide um, nonprofit. Uh, program. So we work all around the state. We have a very small but very dedicated um, team and uh, we are excited to uh, be here. We also work very closely with the recovery community organizations around the state. So um, SOS is your recovery communicate uh, community organization um, for here. Uh, we also have, you know, Folded is a great new restaurant that has just opened and um, is staffed by folks in recovery. We just think it's the coolest thing ever. Um, and we love it and we love that it's in Summersworth. So um, yeah, so we can, we can we can go ahead and um, start this and just kind of go through it pretty quickly. Um, if you want to go to the next slide, thank you. So Recovery Friendly Workplace um, is an uh, initiative through uh, Governor Sununu, um, through the Office of the Governor. It launched in um, March of 2018, and really um, the, the effort is to promote health, safety, and wellness of New Hampshire workplaces and um, employees. Um, we do this through empowering workplaces to provide support to employees in recovery, um, those that uh, may not yet be in recovery and those um, that are impacted by substance use disorders, so family members and such. Um, a, a huge part of our work is challenging stigma. Um, we work um, with businesses to, to really look at their level of stigma and their level of um, or where their culture, their workplace culture is out, and we really try to uh, work to reduce that, that stigma that keeps people from um, coming forward to um, to get help and um, encouraging, of course, on the business side of things, um, this is encouraging employee retention and productivity because if you're well supported at work, you're uh, more likely to stay with the, the company. Um, so a lot of times when we are working with businesses, we have about 370 businesses that are um, designated rec uh, recovery friendly workplaces in the state of New Hampshire. Um, a lot of times when we are working with them, they say, can you tell me how to figure out, you know, how to see if someone is struggling? Um, and there's really, you know, there are there can be some signs and symptoms of um, substance use disorder that you could see in the workplace, but they might be signs of other um, issues that someone was having, other medical um, problems, um, things like that. So we really try to get out of this um, this reasonable suspicion, kind of like uh, kind of looking at 
um, employees that way to in a more punitive way to then we try to work with our um, to build the culture of the business so really um, kind of navigating open and honest conversations th uh, training especially HR professionals to show empathy and compassion to um, understand where their bias and judgment is and to leave that at the door um, as they are working with folks um, and uh, really have a plan with resources and tangible support for those that may be um, in need of finding some support in their um, community. So how we support our RFWs. Um, you are, uh, all our, of our businesses are um, provided a uh, recovery friendly advisor. I was in that role for the past two and a half years. I just recently changed roles. Ellie is in that role now. Um, they, we work one on one with our businesses. So you work, so if the SAU who's to become a recovery friendly workplace, they would have an advisor assigned to them. Everything we do is free of cost. All of the tools and resources that we provide um, are no strain to your budget, which I'm sure you will be happy to hear. Um, and you really get that one-on-one -on -one customized support. Um, the, the process is very flexible because um, businesses in New Hampshire are all so different. Um, and in size and structure and kind of where they are on the continuum of their support of employees. So um, we really try to customize it to uh, really meeting businesses where they're at and uh, working with them to develop a plan to support employees. Um, those are, you can see those are some of the other things that we provide. Peer connections typically happen through recovery community organizations. Um, we may, sometimes folks will want to make a, um, a recovery friendly committee or a wellness committee that we can help uh, support the development of, um, things like that. So we, we kind of would meet with leadership to talk about what, what direction, where you're at now and what direction you would want to move into. Um, I believe that uh, you folks have seen this checklist. This is, um, it is important to uh, Governor Sununu as he's putting this program together to make this business friendly. So it's a one page checklist because we really want to get in and start working with businesses and not make them feel overwhelmed. Um, so it's a one page checklist. Today, um, y you folks are already through the, the first three steps, <laughs> um, or you're, you would be at orientation declaration, would be where you're at. Um, th these are the steps that we take um, before designation. Um, the designation is when you receive your certificate, and then I always say that's when the real work starts. So we have a year to implement some of the, the real work, the information, the resources, um, education and training. We have all sorts of different ways that we can go as we customize the program to your needs. And there's optional, uh, <laughs> you know, depending on capacity, there's lots of other things. We have a lot of champion um, businesses that want to do everything and form, you know, uh, fundraisers and events and different things um, around rec recovery and supporting um, recovery in the community. Other folks, um, you know, just try to get in the uh, education and trainings that they can um, to make sure that their employees are well supported. And was yeah, oh, that is it. Uh, <laughs> I told you it would be real brief. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I think that I had sent uh, Chair Larson the uh, training menu. We do have a learning management system um, that is up online. We can also do in-person trainings we like to pull in our folks that are on the ground um, doing, doing the work in the communities because they know your region. Um, I'm very involved in my community. I know Goffstown very well. Um, but the folks that live in Summersworth know Summersworth. And you have a lot going on here. A lot of really cool, exciting stuff is happening. Um, and we'd love to, love to be a part of it. 
and uh, so we would probably pull in, you know, SOS to help with some trainings if that's the direction that you wanted to go. Pull in the public, the Stratford County Public Health Network, or do amazing work um, with with different trainings, um, and they are all partnered with us. We partner with them in all the regions of the state. So. Thank you so much. And Thank just you. for our kind of just to set the stage, I'm sure I have board members with questions, but are there other um, cities, towns, and uh, school districts that are both designated, you know, recovery friendly workplace, or would we be the first? You would be the first SAU, the, yes. Um, we have the city of Manchester and the city of Concord are, re are designated recovery friendly. Um, and I think we have a couple towns, like smaller towns that are as well. We have, we have a lot of recovery friendly workplaces, so I'll have to think. But um, there are no school districts. Um, we've done some presentations at their requests, but there's no school districts that have um, been able to follow through with the steps to become designated yet. Okay. All right. Okay. I saw board member Clark, Tierney, Wentworth, and Saldati. So thank you for coming and starting this great conversation. I just have a couple quick questions. Like I'm not sure um, like how this would work with students and our faculty so much with and making sure our students. I I understand that recovery it's super important. We start this conversation for sure, but I am a little hesitant. I guess I need more conversation about how what that would look like as a school setting, like what it would look like around our students. That's why we need to know. Sure. So we would be less working with your students. We would be more be working with your staff. Oh, no, no, no. I understand that. Okay. But so I'm going to try and say this delicately and not offend anyone because I feel like I, I could possibly offend somebody. I don't mean to. It would be you know, making sure that we have quality people in our, on our staff that are great role models. We understand that people go through, you know, hard times and choices and whatever, but just make sure. I'm not sure how that would work. And for a school setting, I see a hand being raised, and I don't. I'm I sure you all. I think we've received this question. Oh, okay. Yes. I've heard yes. it I feel like this is okay. This is this isn't. I'm a sure crazy that's probably why all, all the other yeah. SAUs have the similar questions. And Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So you very um, likely are already employing folks that are in recovery, um, and you know we really we really look at um, the folks that are in recovery as an asset to um, businesses and organizations um, so if someone needs to go out to receive treatment if they're struggling if they um, you know if they they do have a substance use disorder um, it should be treated like any other medical condition so just like you you know someone um, that goes out for chemotherapy or cancer treatment or something like that um, you would do that through probably HR, I would imagine, and we would we would want that same kind of uh, equity for folks that are in um, that are seeking recovery. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay. And then I have uh, Tierney Wentworth and Saldati, and then um, O'Brien Hart. All right. Thank you. Um, so, and apologies if you already covered this at the very beginning. How is this funded? Is this grant grant funded? Is this state funded? How? Sure. So the way that we operate, we are um, a program of the governor's um, office, um, but we are administered by Granite United Way, um, which is a nonprofit organization here in New Hampshire. So our funding comes from um, comes f directly from the state. From uh, we have a contract with DHHS, um, and it's um, it's governor commission fund funded. So. Um there's no, th this is something that th the system is set up to keep this sustained, like it's sustainable. I mean, it's like what, you know, with obviously with the governor, yeah. you know, a change of a new governor coming with the next election, this, that, that's irrelevant. It's the program will continue because it's through DHHS. Absolutely. Um, and it, we have the strong support of Granite United Way. They very much believe in this program and, and believe in it moving forward. Um, we've had different grant opportunities, but because we uh, received the funding from from the state, we haven't had to pursue them as often. We did get some ARPA dollars to contract out with different um, entities around the state. We do have different grants that come up sometimes, but um, 
the once the governor goes, the program will continue. Um, actually, there's been some amazing national work that's been happening, um, and it's exciting because we started this effort right here in New Hampshire, and there's about 36 other states in the country that are in either have established a recovery-friendly workplace program or are in are using our model to um, get it going. So that's very exciting. There's also a national organization um, that was just launched in January um, yeah, that uh, Governor Sununu is sitting on as the um, honorary chair. So he is very invested in in this and moving it forward, as is as is um, as is the state. So we will see where we know that we have the strong support for the next three two years. Um, our Budget came in a little late, um, and uh, we'll see where that goes. But the Granite United Way is very committed to keeping it going um, at the at the strength it is. So you said that's a nonprofit, though, right? So that would be more donation based, or uh, Gra okay. yeah, okay. grant based. Um, SAMHSA uh, is the, the Substance Abuse Mental Health association they often have grant opportunities and they have used our model in a number of things before we've never asked them for funding right. um, there's a lot of different avenues um, it's a very well respected program so I don't think that we'd have a lot of trouble um, continuing the funding and then I'm just curious so since some of it is state funded so is some of it coming from taxes it's like is there like I think it's I think the way that our budget and I I don't want to misspeak, um, uh, but I think the way that our budget is at this moment, it's coming from um, Governor's Commission on Alcohol and Other Drugs and um, also the Governor's Discretionary Fund because he did just um, add uh, double our, our uh, reach because we haven't been able to keep up with the amount of businesses with um, just three advisors in the state. Right. Oh, you only have three advisors in the whole state? Well, we're, we're doubling it. We should have um, six soon. Wow. <laughs> so that actually leads to my next question about the, the advisors. So what's, is there um, a background? So do you all have like background social work? Is this like, where does this? Yeah, you know, you know uh, mostly social work. Um, Ellie here has her master's in um, public policy. Um, uh, we do have all of our advisors go through um, Recovery Coach Academy and become um, recovery coaches, um, really have that foundational learning so that they know best practices yeah. in recovery and are, are best able to, uh, to work with folks. So. And then uh, my last question, um, so sort of related to where, where maybe where, where Carrie was sort of thinking, just in terms of um, staff, um, or I should say just employees, right, mm -hmm. and, and regardless of the company. Um, are they, are like, are they tested more frequently for drugs than others, other employees might be? Like, what, I what are sort of the protocols in place that, as in just in terms of, like, sort of supervision, as it were? I understand you were saying that there's this idea of not having the stigma, not, mm -hmm. not assuming, right, but is there, like, what is the process to make sure that, yeah, they're, they're doing what they say what they say they're doing, which is to you know keep up with the programs or whatever. Sure. So that would be coming back to those supportive conversations that you would be having with check-ins, and it really depends on um, what happens uh, with the person. Um, it's important to note, and I think this might go back a little bit uh, to your question. It's important to note that we are not um, asking folks to change their policies about um, not being intoxicated in the workplace yeah. and. Right, right. Um, Clearly, no drugs on campus. Uh, you know, things like that are very important, and you have those pr policies in place for the safety of your students, safety of your the rest of your staff, um, which we, we completely understand. Um, so, if someone <laughs> did show up to work and they were under the influence, and there was some mitigation that that needed to happen, where you know they had to be sent home, they you know you go through uh, a normal process with HR, whatever your policies state, we would just uh, like you to better examine um, whether you're being supportive of that person that go that can go, you know, hold their job if they need to go to treatment and then welcome them back into the school environment with the, or into the work environment with the supports um, around uh, maintaining their recovery. Um, so a little less, because, um, you know, we wouldn't, we wouldn't test someone 
who went out for cancer treatments to make sure that they're like, or, or went out for dia diabetes treatment to make sure they're following their diet. So we, you know, we, I don't think we would necessarily do, uh, you know, recommend anyways that, that kind of like drug testing, but it might, you know, it may be in a return to work agreement, say, if it, they left on in a situation where they were, they were under the influence and it was just, you know, they came in, into work that way, there would need to be some kind of, uh, you know, rules and regulations for them to follow to come back to, to work. And those would be decided upon case by case, just like anyone else. Right. Thank you. Right. Thank you. All right, board member Wentworth, followed by Sadati O'Brien Hart. Okay, and uh, Marsh. Thank you for your presentation. It was lovely, um, very informative. Um, and yeah, I mean, I don't, I wouldn't think that we would turn into probation officers. Um, I have, I have my master's in social work, and my internship was actually um, being a probation officer. So, anyways. Um, one of the things I was wondering is um, I'm aware that this is for the SAU, but it's not just for the office, right? It would be like, you know, the little sticker or whatever would be at each one of our schools um, for the employees there to see when they come into the building that that is something that we kind of advertise or if you're in the know, you know what it means kind of thing. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so that would be for all of our all of our schools and the SAU. Yeah, we would really need to um, kind of create a strategy together mm -hmm. um, and kind of talk about how that would unfold. I believe that we've had a few different ideas that have come up, um, you know, some wonderful ones um, of having maybe training some um, champions uh, within your school district to then, then go and uh, be champions for, for the schools themselves um, and a couple different ideas like that. So it's, re it's really going for a designation to be able to, and what kind of is, is the, is the rational spot where, where I'm seeing this is that it's happening. Mm -hmm. This isn't, this is for support and recovery support for those that are experiencing substances in their life, friends, family, and for us to do that as, as a, as a, as a board support and as an employer is kind of one of those no brainer things, but I welcome Keep asking your question. Absolutely. And and I think that, you know, we have as a board and as um, for my educational committee, we have really been looking at the whole student. Right. I mean, there's so much to be in this country about how much um, you play a role. The school plays a role in uh, a student's life. Um, however, I think that the bare minimum of making sure that they're fed and also um, I think that the recovery friendly workplace not only gives a message to our workers, but it also in uh, results sends a message to all of our students as well. Um, and that speaks volumes um, and possibly, you know, I, I just think that mu much good can come from this. I don't see um, anything bad. I think that it would take some work and uh, we're willing to do it. So. Thank you. Absolutely, board, thank you. Great, board member Soldati, followed by O'Brien Hart. Uh, first, I just wanna say thank you both for coming in this evening. Um, I am actually new to the school board, so I wasn't a part, I didn't know um, that you would be coming in uh, until recently. But I am actually familiar with your work um, and am very impressed with the work that you, your organization has done in the state. And I think you bring up an excellent point also about other community partners being involved in addressing these issues uh, in the state, in the country, um, and here in Summersworth. And I think we are very lucky here in Summersworth that while um, we have, uh, well, we have a lot of troubles, as you've mentioned, a lot of um, a lot of struggles that community members uh, are dealing with. We do have a lot of incredible community resources right at, uh, right across the street, right at our fingertips. Um, and I did also want to echo what Barbara just said, that the message that gets sent when a sticker on the door says recovery friendly workplace doesn't just go to the faculty that's employed by the organization, but to the students and also to potential employees. It goes to the parents, it goes to anyone involved um, in the school district whatsoever. Having attended uh, Summersworth Middle School, I had friends in the school whose family struggled with substance use. And I can tell you, and 
there were well-known faculty members, I imagine, that were struggling. And at the time, the word recovery did not exist. No one spoke about recovery. If you were struggling with what was called alcoholism or drug addiction at the time, it was something to be hidden, it was something to be ashamed of, and it was something that would be prosecuted only um, and dealt with uh, with a sense of shame. And so I think uh, coming back to this community and seeing the incredible work that the recovery that the state has done, all, all, the whole list you have here of not just your own resources, but statewide resources that have, that have been working to address the opioid epidemic and all of substance use in this state is remarkable from what existed when I was a child in this school district. So I just wanna commend you and I'm very excited for what this could mean because in order to address um, challenges that we face as individuals or as communities, the first thing we need to do is name it and then we need to be able to talk about it. And it might be challenging to talk about, it might be complicated, but it's very exciting that literally your name would be at the front door as people walk in, knowing that it's a word that can be spoken of in the halls of their office, of their classrooms, of the school building without shame or stigma. So I really appreciate you coming tonight. Thank you so much, that was uh, beautifully stated and I appreciate it so much. Thank you, all right, O'Brien Hart. Um, I am so excited about this prospect um, and I also appreciate um, board member Clark what you brought up because as a teacher myself um, over the past 20 years I have well one my own family has struggled with substance mm -hmm. use so like having a culture of employment that would be able to support me while like dealing with my own family's issues would be amazing right and I've learned over time and you know we all do our own work but um, I have worked with many teachers and many um, staff members who are non-licensed that struggle with substance use and are in recovery and I think um, and I love bringing this up with my, my not the idea of being held to past expectations with my own students in social studies like anyone can google rules for teachers right and you get these documents that come up that and one of them is 1915 rules for teachers right some of them uh, you may not dress in bright colors you may not, under any circumstances, dye your hair. Mm -hmm. You may not wear. You must wear at least two petticoats. Women may not be seen after dark, and if they're in the company of any man, it's only to be like their father or like the preacher, right? Yeah. So, there, any workplace could struggle with setting a culture of recovery for their employees. But I think, in teaching, because of the expectation on teachers and staff who work with students, with children, right? There's this expectation to be this moral bastion for a community. And it's a lot of pressure for anybody because teachers are just human and staff are just human, paraprofessionals, custodians, food service workers, everybody who works for the schools. To be seen as the keepers of morality for a community, we know that that's not true. We, we, teachers aren't supposed to be this thing for people anymore. But because of the standard of the past, we are still dealing with this idea that we have to be this for people. And so I know my colleagues who are in recovery struggle with like, oh my God, I'm a teacher. Like, I went through this. And the, I swear, it's those people that are, are overcoming this thing that I have seen show examples of grit. Like We're talking about grit all the time in the curriculum. To have this opportunity to have a, a workplace that would, would say, yes, you are welcome here. Yes, you don't have to be this perfect person. Yes, we're gonna support you. And that sticker on the door saying, yeah, hey, uh, you, I've got so many students whose families have people who are in recovery. Like, we're all human and the teacher that's talking to you understands the same thing that your family is going through. I don't know, I just love it. I think it's an important thing and I think it's important to remember like, Schools tend to be this place where we expect so much of the people that work inside of them. And yes, absolutely, we want the best for our students and the best for our children. And at the same time, there's still people, you know, and we still need this kind of space. So thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Wonderful. Board Member Marsh. Thank you for those words. And right, we are all human and we are all people. And I appreciate all, all the, um, <coughs> the questions. So I think, you know, there are many parents and residents of Summersworth that no doubt have the same questions, and, mm -hmm. and I suspect um, you've answered these questions many times, mm -hmm. and uh, so thank you for that. And thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for doing what you do. Um, yes, this did stem from Lee Hill Top Mental Health uh, um, Commission uh, that Chair Larson and I were on was it a couple years ago now or so. And it all, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> it all kind of morphs together a little bit. <laughs> Um, 
But I remember we did a lot of homework at that time and before we made that recommendation. So it's, I'm glad that it's, that it's, it's come here tonight. Um, I think in a different role that I have, I'm the um, Director of Welfare for the City of Rochester. Um, and clearly not all people who, many, most, you know, people who are in recovery are, are not seeking that type of assistance. Mm -hmm. um, however, I will say something I suspect you agree with, um, that it is easier to maintain recovery when you are employed. Certainly. When a person is employed. And oftentimes I hear, rather at social media or where el wherever else, of, you know, just get a job, just get a job. Why don't they just get a job, they, right? Mm -hmm. um, and while I think, you know, recovery friendly certainly uh, makes that um, easier to do. Uh, and I appreciate the, the wraparounds. Uh, many of the agencies that you spoke of, you know, are in my social service universe, mm -hmm. right? We're not in the same orbit necessarily, but it, I'm often at the same table as SOS and, and others. Um, because it is a wraparound. It is a collaborative effort. Uh, and I certainly would take pride, uh, and I believe the city would as well, um, to have this in our school district, uh, knowing um, that employment standards still remain, all right? They're still in HR. <laughs> we, there are still expectations. Um, but it sends a signal. It sends a message, but not just a message, um, but really, I think, uh, it has a practical purpose um, of helping people in need. Um, and, and I agree that, you know, whether we look at it like, you know, and, and with a medical need mm -hmm. is what it is. Um, so uh, I do have one question <laughs> um, that can be broad, and if you don't have an answer for it, it's okay because you may have already answered them. However, are there any more myths, in wh what you would look at as a myth, what you would perceive as a myth, that you could potentially debunk without me asking any, any others, any other questions that you sometimes get that you think people might, our residents, our uh, uh, parents or students may want to know that sometimes are asked, that weren't asked here tonight, that you could, that mm. you could potentially, that you have an answer for. That's a great question. Stands out. Yeah. Um, I, uh, Ellie has one, so that's great. I, I, I really um, think it's important, especially as we're beginning to work um, with staff and faculty that may not have a background in recovery or have an idea of what that word means to understand that substance use disorder um, is not a moral failing. It is not, um, it, it is a brain disease. Um, it is treatable and people live in recovery um, very well. So I think that um, f folks can often be looked at, at as bad people or, um, or things like that that have, um, that have uh, been affected by substance use disorder, but I really think that's very important to say um, because the number one thing that keeps people from getting well when wellness exists and when treatment exists is that stigma that's keeping them away because people will find out that that they had this issue, you know, that they had they are suffering from this this uh, illness. So, um, if we can break down those barriers and get people to um, to find treatment and to lead their best lives and to find a community of support, like um, peer support and other things that do exist right here in this community, um, there is so much hope that goes along with that. And um, I think that benefits your families as well. And I think students seeing that role modeled is um, incredibly powerful um, for their, their own lives and their own choices that they might be making as middle and high school students. Um, so um, I'm gonna let Ellie speak though. Thank you. Hi everyone, thank you for your comments and questions. Um, the, the myth question's really good and I my first thought that popped into my head was, well, we could be here all night if you'd like. Um, and I think the biggest thing for me is debunking the myth of what recovery looks like. Like when you close your eyes and picture someone in recovery or picture someone 
navigating substance use that they would like to change um, to have a more positive effect on their life, that it, because of the way we are socialized in our culture, we do have images to pop up, and our work is to sort of blur those a little bit and say, no, it, it looks like this teacher, it looks like this community member, it looks like the, your neighbor, um, your child, yourself. And I think the more that we see it as something that it does, af that affects all of us, the easier it becomes to say, well, how else are we supporting um, our staff, our teachers, our students, and sort of their whole, the whole student, someone mentioned. Um, it is the whole person. So it's not just this sort of corner of society per se, but rather um, something that could and probably will affect someone directly or indirectly, um, or all of us directly or indirectly. And so there's no, there's no picture um, of, I imagine it won't change as much as you feel like it would. Um, for, for any negative effects becoming a recovery friendly school district. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So um, I, in terms of a, um, a, a, I guess maybe Chair Larson, you could speak to the process mm -hmm. of, of all of this because I, I, I maybe I haven't been paying attention, but I feel like th this is all new to me tonight, but that's maybe my own failing of not reading something, notes somewhere or something. Um, but because as I'm sitting here and I, I really, there's nothing that anybody said that I disagree with, um, but I can just imagine there's gonna be a lot of questions from the community, from parents, concerns, maybe some fears, you know, and just because they're, they don't know, right? We, we don't you know if this is something they do have a thought in their head of, you know, I know this person who was like this and I never, you know, that hurt, you know, somewhere that makes them be afraid, you know? Um, or, or whatever. So I, I can just imagine that we would need to have um, definitely some sessions where parents can come and ask questions and hear, um, you know, and hear safeguards that are in place, just all of that stuff, you know? So I mean, I, I, yeah. think, I think that I like what, you know, what everybody, what we're all saying, yes, absolutely, because, yeah. um, you know, I, the, I forget who, somebody brought up the idea of the jobs, right? And I feel like, yeah, I, the loss of jobs, I, I, you know, people are, they struggle to find jobs and they're, they're finding, they're kind of feeling purposeless and hopelessness and sometimes drugs or alcohol, things are the easy things to turn to to fill holes, right? And so absolutely, I, I would support anything that gives people a drive, gives something to, something to work for, maybe a family, you know, a family they can think about and support and all of that. So wonderful things. Um, but yeah, we definitely need to be thoughtful. Yes. I, I think that just having this conversation tonight is huge. I admire your words so much. There is hope in this conversation, and that's what it is. This isn't a um, – this is this – is, break not, not just breaking stigma, but speaking about something, that's it. Saying it, that's it. We are not designating to uh, change policy. We are, you know, I, in my mind, again, it's the, the sim I'm going simpler of this affects our community, this affects our district, what else can we do to support it? Let's have the conversation. Practical, it would be a des the designation. Yep, so that. Yeah, off the, from my understanding of the work I've been familiar with and, and from your presentation, the biggest thing that you provide is education. Education to employees, resources to employees. So it's not as if it's this is a program of policing or a presence within the space, but really an opportunity to just provide greater education and resources to anyone who needs it. That's all as far as I'm aware that yeah. you provide. Very much so. And um, as we've done this work across the state over the past, uh, you know, five or six years, we've found that um, oftentimes HR uh, folks just don't have, uh, they don't spend a lot of time learn. you know, they don't spend a lot of time teaching about substance use disorder and how to um, best talk with employees who might be struggling and where to find the resources. So that's really a huge part of what we do. Yep. 
So I just wanted to take a minute and say, this was a great conversation. And I'm so thankful you brought it forward. Like, I feel like for myself personally, I've had like a great, um, very small view of what this looked like, right? So I'm very thankful for the conversation that everyone brought forward. And I think this is going to be great for our, our community and for our staff. Um, yeah. So thank you. Thank yeah. you for taking that initiative and bringing it forward to us. Thanks so much. And we can talk more about community discussions if you want to have listening sessions. I love to bring in folks in the community, right in your community that are um, in recovery and doing wonderfully and very um, proud and can share their stories. And I think that's something that can break down that stigma and that folks can really um, relate to. There are commissioners that I have met with at the state of New Hampshire who are in recovery um, um, th that, that, talk, that talk about this, right? So there, there are folks from all, all, all walks of life, right? This, isn't, this is not a, um, substance use disorder is not a, a something that, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, Dimis discriminate is the word, yes, thanks. Um, so yes, we would be happy to do that with you. Sounds like a plan. Right. Great. O'Brien Hart. Well, just to, just to further normalize as like a, a, a medical normal thing, like I, I don't work for the Summers Work District, I work you know elsewhere. My insurance already covers through the employee assistance program support for substance use and counseling if like any of my coworkers or myself or whoever wanted to take advantage of that. So it's not a novel thing, like there's, there's people in recovery already. I just love the fact that we're breaking down stigma and bringing education and like making it not this huge thing about like, you know, like, yeah, I've already said my stuff, but yeah. No, it sounds like we, yeah, uh, Wentworth and then Tierney. I just have a question as to the next step. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tierney, go ahead before. Yeah, so, yeah, and I just wanted to clarify because um, uh, board member Soldati brought up a good point. I, I, in, when I said the word safeguard, and I think I'm just thinking about people who, this is all, again, we're hearing this for the first time, and so I didn't know, I, you know, I didn't really know to Carrie's point, like this is what I thought this was going to be, and okay, so now I'm getting a better understanding. Mm -hmm. And so I can just imagine that community members, parents especially, parents are very protective of their children. Understandably, we all get this. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying there's a danger here, but if people just need to, they w they're gonna wanna understand what this means, and they're gonna understand, yeah, just what this means. So that's all. I'm that, hearing that's support from the board yeah. for, this, for this initiative. And that is what the purpose of today was, <laughs> of this was, <laughs> to kind of have it be broadcast, go to our community, have, it, have a better knowledge of it, and then kind of schedule some listening sessions, have some um, folks, you know, and, and then kind of pass it to the district to be able to um, formalize and arrange those things. I am just so grateful for you both being here. I um, have been a champion of this for some time of getting it off the ground. I am proud of this board. I'm proud of this community for kind of speaking. I think that is the biggest step. Just and yeah. yes. Tonight's conversation is amazing and that's breaking down stigma right there. So I so appreciate your, your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for being here and um, let's continue this work. It's great. Great. Okay. Great. Thank you. That, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that handout um, that that Ellie had passed around. Um, so that's that's kind of customized. There's some statewide resources, but then it's customized down to um, your your community right here. So yes. um, that's something nice that you can have and share out. Um, and we have plenty of resources like that. Okay. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you. All right. Moving along to some policies, pretty simple this evening. Um, 7.1, we have no policies for first read. We have um, two policies to approve for second reading. I make a motion to read policies for second reading by title only. Great. All, all in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. Board Member Tierney, can you read uh, the first policy by title only? All right. Policy GCG, part-time and substitute professional staff employment. Okay, what's the wish of the board to adopt this policy that's been read a first time, a second time, and it's ready to be adopted? Motion to adopt policy GCG. Okay, do you have a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Wonderful. 
sub pay has been raised. Ooh. My goodness gracious. All right, the second policy, please. All right, policy JICJ, technology slash communication devices, grades 9 through 12. Okay. Do I, have a, do I have a motion to approve this policy as presented? Red? Motion to approve policy JICJ, technology communication devices. Second. Great. All right. Any discussion? It's amazing. All right. Um, I would like this to kind of be um, presented a little bit more, I think, to our community, to our, our school community, maybe on the front page of the website or something like that as it relates to students in their, t in their cell phones, just so we can get the word out a little bit more. All right. With that, all in favor of this policy, say aye. aye. All right. Policy is adopted. J-I-C-J. -J. All right. Under new business, we have um, 8.1, our last day of school. You read in the superintendent notes. So the last day of school is June 12th, and um, Maggie has said to me that, and, and perhaps some of you too have heard, um, there are some parents who are looking to see if the last school could be, you know, earlier, uh, because there's been no snow days this year, and um, if we were to, um, let's right now the last day of school is Wednesday, June 12th, 2024. If you moved it to Tuesday, it would give teachers an opportunity. They'd still work, but they could pack up their rooms and, you know, you know, not be so rushed to leave school, and they'd have an opportunity to pack up and, and organize. So uh, I'm trying to get a sense of what other folks think about this, and I'm going to be quiet. Yep. Board Member Wentworth. I support that idea wholeheartedly. If you wanted to make it even and do a Friday, June 7th, I'd be in support of that as well because there's been no school. I think graduation days. is the 10th. Oh. Yeah, this is graduation. <laughs> I said. Board Member Brown? I just want to make sure by moving it up, we are not, con I mean, we've met our yeah. requisite days. Yes, you have. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. yeah, and it's actually hours. It's, you've met your hours, yeah. So does this mean we're going to get a massive snowstorm now if we say more than we just had? You, you raise a good point because I've seen it snow. I don't want to be a bummer here, but I've seen it snow in late, in, in late April. I've seen it snow in May. So, but anyway. So, no, go ahead. Okay. No, so that was my only thought with, with that. And then um, we said we have enough hour, enough days and – so would we move from the 12th to, uh, to the, uh, the 11th? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm good with that. Yep. Board Member Tierney, then Silvati? Okay. Oh, no. Okay. Well, so, I, I mean, you're not wrong. It could, we right. absolutely can have a snowstorm in April, right? It's, it's, yeah. so, it, it, does it make sense to just hold off on this particular motion until, like, the end of April? I mean, well, why, we would why just push are we? it forward a day or we'll come to that. I think right now is the time to communicate out to the, com to the community, okay. let them know, right? And it's one of those things, no snow days. It is one of those things, too, such a good chunk of summer. We've come out July, June 26, 27th um, many, many times. And to have that, like, chunk of summer for the, our entire communities kind of was like, this sounds amazing, especially to know about it now and get that boost to be like, here we go, final stretch. Yes, Board Member Brown. I am a fan of getting word out early for parents that are dealing with full-time work and mm -hmm. summer your kid is out of school. Um, and so my only concern is I, uh, I don't know when the rec department um, summer camps start up. And if anyone happens to know, I, I would greatly appreciate that because – those are well attended. It's a great safety net for parents. Yep. And, you know, where this is midweek, uh, that, that I guess that's my only concern as a parent is coverage. But, yes, here it is March, and we're giving people a heads up. But, anyway, that, that's my so thoughts. I, you could. You could think about it. The word, let, let the word permeate, hmm. and then come back next month. I'm not. I, I'm sorry. On April 9th, if you wanted to, and have a vote. But that's great. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, O'Brien Hart right, and then somebody. So. Oh, you do. Okay. Yeah. So I just looked it up, and it looks like um, summer camp starts June 24th. So even if we ended on the 12th, it's just still going to be a couple of weeks. Yeah. So I'm good with still moving it to the 11th. Yeah. Okay. 
It wouldn't matter. It right. makes me very anxious to even talk about it because you just don't talk about this kind of thing. Yeah. But, you know, uh, it would be an amazing gift for staff and teachers to be able to have that extra day. So I am in support of it. Um, I was just also supporting. Yeah. We have so anything else? Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Well, let's play this out. So let's say we get a massive snowstorm on Tuesday of next week, mm -hmm. and we're out for two days. Uh, that puts. I'm just just throwing it out there, folks. No, so let me go down the road. So um, I'm just playing, you know, devil's advocate here. Um, so the last day of school would then be the 14th, right? If you cancel two days, do you want to say you you're, you're out a day early as of the last? I'm trying to figure out what am I trying to say here. So, pardon me. Thirteenth would be the last day then. Because yeah, right. The thirteenth would be the last yeah. day. So, that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. That good. makes sense. Yep. Good. Yep. I okay. I I know. <laughs> sorry. I know you just said it was tight. I don't really know why April 9th would make all the difference. But I I'm kind of in favor of getting this out there. Hello, everybody listening. Let's get some feedback from the community because we have no idea if that extra day is going to put anybody in a position where I, I'm just saying it's, yeah, it's it came one day. from the community. It's it, like it's, sure. it was one of those that came right. from the community, and it's one of those, <laughs> it's one of those things that we've just have had no snow days. It's been constant, and it, letting people know now things can be adjusted now, but like letting it know now rather than the second week in April and then trying to make I think we're already tight for that for that now, I mean, we could extend school by a week. I'm th the only thing, I'm sorry, yeah. just real quick. The, the, you know, the only thing I'm just thinking is, yes, we've heard from a couple people who said, hey, we haven't had snow days, so why not? But we have no idea if there's a larger group of people who as soon as they hear this are like, whoa, what are you doing? I had, that means I have to find this childcare and do this. And I, yeah, I mean, I just don't know. I'm, I'm just saying, I don't know. Okay. That's Remember all. Wentworth, yep. Um, okay, so we, we can only end on the 11th if we have no no snow days. What if we have one snow day? Do we have to change the date? Like how many hours do we have? So right. we've, like, we've do lessened we have our calendar like by day, like three days before because we've had the hours, the 990. Right. So what? how many, you know what I mean? Like how close are we riding it? <sighs> like if we. I don't know not how very close we're riding it. You know, this can't, this Initially, this this is not a recommendation for me. It came from the community. Maggie asked me to get it on the agenda. We did. Um, I could certainly go back and take a look at that. But even if it was, I, it's not that close. I, don't, I, don't, I think you're okay. Then I I would say even if we do end up having um, an April fifteenth snowstorm on my birthday, um, then uh, we still end on the eleventh. If we're not that close, right? You I've, know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. This is interesting for me because my entire career, I haven't worked in a system where we didn't have a snow day, <laughs> yeah. and so I'm usually getting heat because I'm calling school off. Now I'm getting some heat because okay. we didn't call school <laughs> off. So O'Brien Hart, then Sal then Saldati. Could we just end when we have the hours and plan for? Like I think that would be earlier. It's right. just one day. So okay. is there? So, so I'm day. looking. You know, before we get too long. Is there, you know, the the support came to me. I said, you know, we've had a year without having a day. Typically, there's four or five. It kind of made sense. I think for like the for the for the students that I know, for the families, it made sense. It's one day, so it would be a motion to uh, end the school year for students on um, June 11th. If if that is in that's kind of where we're at here, it's one day. And staff would day. and staff would report to work and clean yeah. up and do yeah. their thing. I, well, I I think we should be, to be fair to the community, I think we should allow a community input. That So I, I will say nay to this just be, just for that I'm reason. I'm just going to say that we're giving them so much time, they're going to be able to find time to figure out this last day. It's one day. Yes, John, oh, so, yes, go ahead. No, I was just going to clarify that it was one day. Yeah, it's one day. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Hey, if they, we get community input, we can shift. We can, we can, that happens. All right. Do I have a, do I have a motion to end the school year by one? I would love one to day. motion 
to end the school year by one day. One hundred days. Okay. To, to do you, like it's just June eleventh. June eleventh. June eleventh. Second. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. Oh, sorry, but. but uh, yes, yes. Sorry. No. I just want to say, I, I'm going to vote in favor. However, I do appreciate Board Member Tierney's uh, alternate way of looking at things. I mean that. I'm not. <laughs> no, I mean b because you know, trying to look around the corner, and and normally we do have a first reading and a second reading to give people a chance to to comment and so forth. But I think in a situation like this. I certainly can weigh on the side of giving people more time. We're providing more time for people to make plans. Right. Well, I, okay, and sorry. All right, so so what you're telling me is we, we can change it. So if the community is like, no, 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 if we hear a lot of pushback, all I'm saying is, right. if we hear a lot of pushback, we can revisit this. I think also in the same thing, absolutely, uh, we should probably look at like how um, what we have for care and child care and be able to like look bigger picture for that too as well in in the in our schools. I think that's more like that's a big thing too. So stay tuned for that. All of this new business, however, there is a suspension of rules to make you know I, we haven't done this in a while, right? So if um, there would be, I believe, because we haven't done this in a while, and there's a lot of things to approve tonight under new business. Um, so let's get, you know, get in the format of um, someone making a motion to suspend rules so we can vote on new business. Motion to suspend rules so that we can no vote on new business. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay. So there's another motion on the, t on the table to end the school year minus one day due to no snow days due to many things for our school district to June 11th, 2024. All in favor? Say aye. 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 That passes. Thank you. There are also, so we're going through kind of a list of new business, um, 8.2, 8.3, and 8.4 to all approve. I do, Board Member Marsh, should we suspend rules for each one to be, to be able to approve these, these upcoming grants? We and haven't just to be clear, you don't need to do the food, food service ones tonight. My okay. plan was to bring them back on okay. April 9th, so those right. you do not have to vote okay. on. Okay, so minus rules. that one. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you, those Katie. both those two can come so, back next time. So just the 8.2 okay. um, approved district-wide safety grants awarded by the New Hampshire do DOE. I believe we should vote on that this evening. Yeah, I would like you to vote on that tonight. Yeah. And can I speak to that? Oh, yeah. Yes, so, please. Susan, can you come yes. to the podium, please? I want to thank you publicly for your work on this. Um, so Susan, thank you for all your hard work. I know you worked with Katie and Jay and myself and the principals. Um, these were competitive grants that you're gonna vote on tonight. Um, Sue worked tirelessly on this. Um, we have secured, we've been awarded one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 grants, totaling 170,000. $365. So I want to publicly thank you, Susan, for your hard work. Thank you. And, uh, thank you. Thanks. And uh, she does a lot of work behind the scenes and um, has been very supportive of uh, the administration in, in terms of getting grants and making adjustment to existing grants. So before you vote, I just want to let you know, I'm just going to go through the list so the, so the public will know. You have this in your background. I'm not going to get into the specifics of, of the projects themselves because of public safety. Um, so, Idlehurst Elementary School is awarded a, a grant for $18,000 for exter exterior building access. Uh, Maplewood Elementary School, two grants. The first one to secure front entrance of the school at $9,000. Maplewood Elementary School, uh, $14,400 interior door locks at, at Maplewood. Uh, Somerset High School has one, two, three, four, five, six grants. Um, first one, $14,000 to would go towards the health clinic access control so we can have that door be more private, uh, separate from the school. Um, also um, at the high school, secure entrances between SMS and SHS. Uh, the also extra um, bus port security at Somerset High School. Um, Somerset High School classroom doors, uh, door locking systems. Um, Somerset High School visitor management system and middle school, three grants, uh, one for secure front entrance for the middle school. So all our schools now will have two, two areas that are locked when you go in. 
Um, so there'll be, you know, you have to be let in at two different locations at each door. Mm -hmm. And then um, Summer Resorts Middle School uh, exterior door surveillance and Summer Resorts Middle School um, locking interior doors. I've been around long enough to know about school security. All the things on this list are, are what many schools strive to accomplish. So, Sue, again, thank you so much for your work on this, and I'm so happy that the state um, awarded these grants to us. And, um, you know, I, I first got into safety around the Sandy Hook time, right? And it was tragic and very s sad to me, and um, been doing a lot of work in all the districts I've worked in for security, and um, this is good stuff here. This is really good stuff for our students and for our, and to protect the safety of our faculty and staff as well. So thank you for letting me speak to that. Oh, no. Thank you, Sue, so much. I mean, there's kind of we, a lot of the things that we talk about. There's a center on, there's the center on students and safety is probably the, the number one of, of our students. And this is kind of incredible. And to see the list, usually we get a couple, but this list is amazing and, um, with that, I'd like a motion to suspend rules to be able to approve these grants as presented. Vote to suspend rules so that these grants. Oh, oh you just suspend rules. Just I, to suspend I, rules. I would just like to suspend the rules. <laughs> yes, just suspend rules so we can vote. Yes, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Now I'm looking for a motion to approve our district wide safety grants um, awarded by the New Hampshire Department of Education. I'll make a motion to approve the Security Action for Education, SAFE, grant. Proposed totaling $170,000 in change. Great. Do I have a second? Second. Great. Wonderful. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you so much. And I just want to mention we're going to follow the bidding process by policy. Okay. Some of these will be source, could be sole source because there's one vendor that pretty much does this type of work. I met with Katie and um, Jay and Susan, and we talked about that in terms of what would be potentially sole source and what would be competitive bids. So we'll follow your policy with regard to that. So thank you for approving those grants. Wonderful. Much appreciated. Wonderful. All right. So 8.3, the approval of the renewal of food service contract with Fresh Picks. Katie, uh, we, I'm just, I'm just saying yeah. it yeah. out loud. Uh, anything else with that? Um, and then 8.4, to approve the fiscal year school breakfast lunch prices. This will be on our uh, an April 9th agenda. Our old and unfinished business is to approve the band uniform donation in the amount of $27,000 from the Summersworth Friends of Music. Um, this was presented at our previous meeting. Yes, and because the amount's over $19,999, I w wanted to make it known to the public that we're receiving this donation. Uh, we did that at the last meeting, and tonight you simply vote on it. Do you want me to go through the list again, or are you, you're okay yeah. with it? Okay. Yeah, you know. Okay. Gauntlet. Thank you for letting <laughs> me know that. Thank so you. you're going to approve for uniforms uh, 27,000. Yes. 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 From 1979 to 2024, do I have a motion to approve um, the band uniform donation in the amount of $27,000? I make a motion to approve the donation of $27,000 from the Summersworth Friends of Music. Great. Do I have a second? I second. Okay. Any discussion? Just thank you. Grateful for this. Can't wait to see this in the future. In the fall, our, the arts are thriving. The band uniforms are phenomenal. Um, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Thank you so much, Summersworth Friends of Music and Dr. Tully. All right, future meeting dates, April 2nd, Building and Grounds um, at 515 at Maplewood. Uh, April 9th, Policy Committee here at City Hall, followed by our next board me uh, meeting. Any comments by visitors this evening? I don't believe there are any um, comments by board members. Just raise your hand, I'll call on you if you have a comment at the end of our this evening or anything to say. Yes, Board Member Brown. I didn't comment earlier, but I am just so proud of this this school school board and our school district of what we're doing, and everyone is coming together. Uh, this is just such a wonderful, um, you know, community focused, student focused um, school district. I just love it. Thanks for everyone that, that's doing everything: grants, yeah. um, the um, uh, recovery friendly workplace, et cetera. Shout it from the hilltops and. And Lou, and thank you. And our superintendent, wonderful, thank you. Anyone else? Oh, 
Yeah. Oh, just thank you, Recovery Friendly Workplace. Thank you for coming. Thank you, um, board, for being, I mean, again, like, my admiration. And um, I will give a shout out to Little Shop of Horrors. I am still in awe of that production. I was didn't think I was going to be able to make it, but in the storm, the weather had the lights flickering, the cast kept going. The uh, it was a it was a repertory, professional, dedicated chills all over professional. I'm saying professional because it's our it's our students. These are our high school students that are doing this, and they knocked it out of the park. Would have paid much more than seven dollars to go see that. It was just we couldn't film or take pictures. Um, from from my heart as a as a as a as a parent, seeing these students come up and seeing just kind of the connection to the arts, the connection to our community, um, it's something that we really all should be proud of. It was phenomenal, knocked it out of the park. Thank you. Let's continue that going um, with everything else, all good things. <sighs> Agenda item number 13, we do have non-public for um, per 91A32A through, A through C. Um, do I have a motion to go into non-public? Make a motion to go into non-public pursuant to RSA 91A colon 3 Roman 2, little a through c. Yes. Do I have a second? Second. Can I have a roll call three? Maggie three. Larson. Yes. Oh. Yes. Terry Clark. Katie. Yes. Sarah O'Brien <laughs> Hart. Yes. Crystal D. St. Croix. Marsha Brown. Yes. Barbara Wentworth. Susan Tierney. Yes. Gemma Soldati. 